Ming Lawa, I'm Henry Zin. Welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today, where we bring you the latest news and reports from around Myanmar. Our first report is on Chief Minister calling for more investments in Mun State. Another report on Myanmar ratifying Convention 138 of the International Labour Organization. A story coverage on the launch of Myanmar's first medical skill, Simulation and Research Centre. And lastly, a report on Mido introducing fact-checking messenger board. Now, before we get to the reports, why don't we have a look at what's happening in local news. The 2019 International Day of Persons with Disabilities was held on Tuesday with a theme of The Future is Accessible. In looking towards a future where the barriers which stand in people's way no longer exist. Vice President Wu Henry Van Thieu, the chairman of the National Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, delivered an opening remark at the event held at the Myanmar International Convention Center 2 in Nebido. Vice President Wu Henry Van Thieu said the government has developed scripts for the blind to understand conventions on the issues of children, women, and persons with disabilities, and worked with the relevant ministries and the Japan Heart Medical Care Volunteer Association in implementing massage therapy education programs for the blind. The country will categorize the level of disabilities based on their answers to the questions for the different age levels. The pilot project of Future We Want has been launched in Yangon for easy transportation of people with disabilities, and the second project is being carried out at Myoma Market and the Water Fountain Garden in Nebido. The Steering Committee for Organizing All Round Youth Development Festival, Magwe, held a coordination meeting in Nebido on Tuesday for the upcoming festival. The festival is scheduled to be held from 14th to the 16th of December. Chairman of the Steering Committee, Union Minister Dr. Pei Mien, said youth of this generation are keenly interested in news, information and technology and thus, these topics must be incorporated into the festival. He also said roundtable discussions aimed at youth should include topics that interest young people and give them a chance to participate in as well. Steering Committee Vice Chairman, Union Minister for Education Dr. Myo Ji said basic education schools, technical and vocational high schools and government technical institutes of the Ministry of Education will be assisting in the successful organization of the All-Round Youth Development Festival. The All-Round Youth Development Festival aims to promote the value of knowledge, skills and ethical values as well as developing the five strengths, physical, mental, ethics, friendship and strength in order to establish the future of Myanmar society with positive thoughts and ideas of youth. Union Minister for Religious Affairs and Culture throughout Uwanko delivered an opening remark at this seminar on conservation and storage management for paintings and fabric artifacts for museum professionals in the ASEAN countries held in Nebido on Tuesday. The Union Minister said the needs of special conservation of artifacts at the museums where cultural heritages of any country can be studied and that the forum was expected to share knowledge on these experiences. The representatives from ASEAN member countries briefed on challenges and difficulties in restoration of paintings and fabric handicrafts. The two-day seminar is a project of the ASEAN Committee on Culture and Information and a paper reading session is also included in the seminar. Wu Tanzin Luen, Director General of the Directorate of Investment and Company Administration, said a Hong Kong based company will invest 500 million US dollars to execute electricity generation, supply, and sale projects in Yangon and Jiaopu. Hong Kong listed CNTIC V Power Company will invest $363 million in the generation of electricity from LNG and supply and sale of electricity on IPP basis at the Taketa Power Plant in Yangon region. Additionally, the company will invest $140.47 million in the generation of 150 megawatts of electricity from LNG and supply and sale of electricity on IPP basis in Jiaopu Township in Rakhine State. That's all with the local news and here's the first report on Myanmar today. With primary aim to invite more investments in the state, Mun State Investment Fair was held at the Strand Hotel in Molamiain last week. Our reporters, Bietain and Yenai, will tell us more. With a great aim for more investments from both local and abroad as well as 
bringing the potential investors into the state to study economic opportunities. The first Moon State Investment Fair was held at Strand Hotel in Molamian from 29th to 30 November. The event drew about 300 attendees. The two-day investment exhibition was attended by chief ministers of Moon and Kayin states and the state government officials. Officials from public and private sectors, representatives from local and international businesses and civil society organizations. They discussed the opportunities to better support for more socio-economic development. In his welcoming remark, Moon State Chief Minister Dr. E. Zan invited for more investments into the state. He also stressed that the state coming up with the future vision of strategic planning 2035 as a lot more opportunities for the investors. <laughs> The state government will do support to facilitate the investments in the state, which is also very rich in natural resources. We warmly welcome to come and invest in the state's tourism and other business sectors. We have lots of attractions like famous pagodas, red hot springs, as well as beautiful beaches. So the investor can grab the great opportunities here. <laughs> According to him, the annual GDP of state accounted for 4,360.36 billion at the end of 2018 to 2019 fiscal year. Under the future vision of strategic planning 2035, the state has now implemented up to 104.1% and more and more private investments in the state become crucial role in such development. There are 80 investments pouring into the state, according to data till November, with 38 from abroad and 42 from local. Foreign investment amounts to USD 5,743.98 million and local investment 822,825.75 million chats. General Secretary of Moon Entrepreneurs Association, Nai Tun Lue, who is also managing director of local Moon C Group Company Limited, said that Moon State is quite different from other states in terms of transportation and security. They are very good. And the other thing is we have large number of skilled factory workers, so it will be a good choice for local and foreign investments. The point is 70 or 80 percent of the youth here have overseas work experience, so we have lots of skilled workers. For the foreign companies who wish to come and invest here, they can hire them without any additional special training. Their work experience can be of great help to the investors. And the other benefit we have is most areas in the state have electric city access. Only few areas left without electric city. So speaking overall, we have very good transportation, electric city access, as well as peace, all of which can be great help to the investment. The strategic location of Moon State has lots of potential too. In order to promote trade with the neighboring countries, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Although in the past, agriculture, fishing, and mining were the state's primary life livelihoods, starting from the recent years, foreign direct investments have been coming into the state, with livelihoods shifting to industrial manufacturing, energy, and electricity industry. Dr. A. San also said. <laughs> As a result of the country government's great reforms, as well as with the energetic contribution of state region governments, Myanmar has improved its ranking in the World Bank's risk of doing business list to 165 from 171. And our country also made forward in several areas and is among the top 20 reformers for the year according to the World Bank. At the moment, local and foreign investors are very much interested, hoping for strategic planning for the future which can help develop not only Moon State but also the whole country. 
and are for them, Moon State's future vision of strategic planning 2035 has come out. It was well researched and drawn by Singapore-based Sabana Jurong Group under the state policy and in collaboration with local organization. Sabana Jurong Group is one of the largest Asia-based urban and infrastructure consulting firms. With over 50 years service background, the group has successfully implemented over 100 industrial projects for more than 30 countries. That's a report on Chief Minister calling for more investments in Moon State. All right, it's time now to check on the weather forecast in Myanmar. In Yangon, it's a beautiful weather with mostly sunny conditions during the day with patchy clouds at night. The temperature throughout the day will be in the 30s, but the entire day heat will give in to the temperature cooling off at night at about 20 degrees Celsius. There's no chance of rain for the day, but there's winds of up to 9 kilometers per hour. In Nebido, it's mainly cloudy during the day with patchy clouds at night. The temperature throughout the day will be in the 30s as well, but of course, with the temperature cooling off at night at around 15 degrees Celsius, you can just tuck in your bed with the chilly night weather. There's no chance of rain for the day, but there's winds of up to 7 km per hour. In Mandalay, a nice weather with intervals of clouds and sunshine in the day, and the sky is clear to partly cloudy at night. The temperature throughout the day will be in the 30s, but the temperature is dropping to about 15 degrees Celsius, so that would compensate for the entire day's heat. There's no chance of rain at all, and there's winds of up to 9 km per hour. Well, we have another report coming up, and then we'll check on the stocks and currency exchange rates. <music> Myanmar was one of the 15 countries in the world which had not ratified Convention 138 of the International Labour Organization, but after the proposal of President Wu Min to consider ratifying of this Convention 138, Pidong Zuluto made a discussion on Tuesday on this subject whether to adopt the convention or not. Wellington has the details. According to the 2015 Labour Force Survey report, 1.13 million children aged 5 to 17 years or 9.3% of the child population is in child labour in Myanmar. Key sectors where the child labour occurs are agriculture, 60%, manufacture 12%, wholesale and retail trade, repair of motor vehicles and other area of 11%. The term child labor is often defined as the work that deprives children of their childhood, their potential and their dignity, and that is harmful to physical and mental development. Child labor deprives children and adolescents from a normal childhood, exposing them to moral, health and social risk. It prevents them from education, studying normally, and also from developing skills and ability to their highest potentials. Child labor is a serious violation of human rights and fundamental rights and principles at work, thus presenting a barrier to a decent work. Child labor is a cause and consequence of poverty and lack of opportunities. It impacts the development of countries and often leads to forced labor in adulthood as well as other human rights violations. For all these reasons, the elimination of child labor is one of the priority of ILO or International Labor Organization. And Myanmar is one of the top countries where the percentage of child labor is very high and to reduce the existence of child labor and improve current condition of child rights in Myanmar, Pidong Zutladom make a discussion on its second time 14 regular session on Tuesday to reform and consider the minimum age convention for the children in Myanmar. The recommendation was first sent to Pidong Zutladom by President U Win Min. Therefore, Lodo representatives make a discussion over it. There are several opinions in Lodo, some approving the proposal but some also wanting to reduce the age further. Discussing at Pidongsu Lodo Umao Min of Mingin constituency said, Minimum age commission would be like it. Show both of them that she boy in a pinayo with some moody, long loss of from you, but she a poor wind hang on Yamaha. Poor body at Lugu, a testament and the gun is salinity. If we look at minimum age convention carefully, we find that it allows children from the age of 12 to 14 to do light works for the children in developing countries. Therefore, we cannot allow children under 12 to do any light work and the government is responsible to see that we implement this policy. 
after we accept the proposal to adopt minimum age convention, we also need to see through that we follow all the rules and regulations of ILO on minimum age convention. But if we fail to do that, there will be consequences. However, considering the issues such as abolition of forced labor, right to organize the collective working convention, and discrimination of employment, we seriously need to adopt the minimum age convention proposal by the president for the welfare of the children. And discussing on the welfare of children in Myanmar, Dr. Kin Susuji of B constituency also discusses. Human beings are constantly growing physically from birth until their teenage. And if the children would have to work hard from their childhood, it will have effects in their growing in stature, mentality, and other areas as well. Therefore, the work that the children should do should not be harmful things for them where the children work without going to school or no longer are able to go to school due to work. Unless we provide much needed support to the children, we won't be able to bring up good future leaders for our nation, as all the related ministries and non-governmental organizations are willing to eradicate child labor in Myanmar, it will not be difficult process to adopt Convention 138 of ILO for the children and we ought to accept the proposal to adopt the convention. In the end of discussion, Flodo agreed on approving adopting Convention of 138 of ILO, saying that this is the right time to consider laws about labor in Myanmar. Now, Myanmar has rectified Convention of 138 like any other ASEAN countries. Formerly, Myanmar was one of the 15 countries in the world which has not rectified Convention 138 of ILO. This is Williamson reporting for MI Radio. As a report on Myanmar ratifying Convention 138 of the International Labour Organization. And here we have the information on currency rates from Myanmar Central Bank. One US dollar is at 1,504 jats. One Chinese renminbi is at 213 jats. One euro is at 1,667 jats. One pound sterling is at 1,953 jats. One Singapore dollar is at 1,102 jats. One Malaysian ringgit is at 360 jats. One Thai baht is at 49 jats, and the Indian rupee is at 21 jats. Gold is trading at $1,479. Silver is at $17. And Brand crude oil is at $56. On the Yangon Stock Exchange, FMI went up 500 and it's at 11,500. MTSH dropped 50 and it's at 3,800. MCB remains at 8,300. FPB is at 23,000. TMH remains at 2,850. You're with MI Radio's Myanmar today. You can log on to our website at miradio.com.mm and catch many other great programs of MI Radio on the website. We're also running on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay, and 96.7 in Nebido. Alternatively, you can download our app on both iOS and Android platforms. It's easy to search. Just type in Myanmar INTL Radio and you'll find the app. Download it on your devices so you can listen to our radio programs on the go. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. Myanmar's first medical skill, simulation and research centre was launched on Monday. State Councillor Don San Suu Kyi, Union Ministers, Yangon Region Chief Minister and Regional Ministers attended the opening ceremony at the centre. For more on the rationale behind the launch of the centre and Myanmar's medical status, Aga Jo will tell us more. Myanmar's first medical skill simulation and research center was launched on December 2nd. State Councillor Don San Suu Kyi, Union Ministers, Yangon Region Chief Minister and Regional Ministers attended the opening ceremony at the center. In the past, Myanmar's medical university was ranked second in Asia. However, due to over six decades of closed-door policy, the ranking of the Medical University of Yangon has dropped to about 12,000 in the world ranking. Myanmar requires facility and the improvement in research to improve the medical sector as a whole. In order to catch up with the counterparts and develop the medical research and technology, the Medical Simulation and Research Center was launched. 
This is the first ever facility open in Myanmar. We cannot do the simulation on the people, so we need to do the training and simulation in the mannequins. I am very confident that this will help improve the students' competencies and catch up with the ASEAN standard. This is a milestone for the treatment sector, so our next step is to maintain the facility and equipment here. This is just a dedicated place to conduct research and simulation. This center is for all the medical students and healthcare professionals across Myanmar. This is the first pilot model in Myanmar and will expand into other parts of the country. So the next one will be opened in Mandalay. 1,500 students are admitted to medical universities across the country every year. The Medical Skills Simulation and Research Center is worth 7.2 billion jets. More than 12,000 million jets was used for it, with the state allocating more than 9,800 million jets and local and foreign donors contributing more than 2,300 million jets worth of cash and kind. Myanmar Medical University was once ranked second in Asia, and we are going to go back to that place and this is one of the efforts. Now with this center launch, we have started to catch up with the international standard. To me, I do not know any center in Asia that is complete with the facility and dedicated center like this one. There are similar places like NTU, but they are just part of the medical institutions. And this one here in Yangon is dedicated center. Among over 30,000 universities in the world, University of Medicine in Yangon ranks over 12,000 or so. So we won't rest on laurels. With that, we will try our best to improve the rank. State Councilor, Union Ministers and the Rector stress the clinical skill as well as non-technical skill including teamwork, communication and leadership subjects can be taught at the center. The Medical School Simulation and Research Center was opened by State Councilor Dong San Suu Kyi, Union Ministers Lieutenant General Zhao Sui, Dr. Pei Mian, Wu Min Du, Dr. Miu Ting Ji, and Dr. Mian Tui, Peace Commission Chairman Dr. Dim Yo Wen, Yangon Region Chief Minister U Piu Min Ting, and Yangon Region Little Speaker U De Mountain cutting the ceremonial ribbon. There were situations where a patient feeling pain and fatigue needs to be taken into consideration. In international workshops and discussion, mannequins, donated body parts, medicine and equipment were used to simulate real-life situations. This was similar to using simulators to train pilots with developing technologies rather than using an actual airplane. Due to medical simulation training center and research department, doctors and nurses can practice repeatedly until the actual treatment work can be conducted without endangering the patient. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. That's a report on the launch of Myanmar's first medical skill simulation and research center. And here's the last report on Mido introducing fact-checking messenger bot. With a purpose to give people awareness about which news online are real or not, Mido has launched its real or not messenger bot last week. David Turner has the details. As this era has been rapidly growing, where we can get all the information just in our hand, it becomes both good and bad scenario in ways that we use and understand those information. With all those in mind, Mido, which is a Myanmar-based civil society organization with an aspiration of technology for social change, has made a fact-checking Facebook Messenger bot to check whether the information or news are facts indeed or not. We will find out for more for the details of the event by Matatai Ao, who is the executive director 
of media. So we've also been trying to study what are the impacts of the social media usage for the public in Myanmar. So what we found out is because we digital leapfrog from a no phone to a smartphone country, the people are vulnerable and prone to negative impacts on social media, for instance, like having uh, exposed to misinformation and disinformation on the internet. So as a a mid and long term solution, media literacy is definitely uh, one element that we should consider. So Mido has been working on uh, developing media literacy uh, contents uh, specifically for you know, the social media users in Myanmar. So today we are launching our media literacy uh, contents, including the websites, our uh, messenger chatbots, as well as a full curriculum which consists of not only uh, the training materials, but also uh, materials such as the, the teacher's handbooks and so on and so forth. What will be the workflow of the fact-checking? Will it just be a messenger board programmed just by lines of code? Or will there be human interaction in the process? Let's find out. One is providing media literacy awareness and another one is fact-checking. So for fact-checking, uh, we have a workflow. For instance, if people uh, would like to know anything related to, if, if there's any news that they wanted to verify, they can uh, contact us and then there's a fact-checking team in-house in Mido where if it's a very easy, technological, uh, related, uh, you know, just a uh, uh, fact-checking needed, then we will be using tools such as reverse image search and then send it back to the questioner. We also have a network of experts so we can ask them and also we also have a network of for instance community where if there's the fact uh, for example if the misinformation is too localized so it's it's actually fact checked by Mido but we also take full accountability on on our fact checking. Matt Tai Tai R also told MI Radio about how the sensitive facts will be checked through the board. There are another two steps where this fact check has to go through uh, who will be you know uh, approving it and after approving it it will also go back to the fact checker to do a double check on whether this fact is correct or not and then it goes again back to the approver so in that way we also take accountability in our fact checking results so if there's any uh, mistakes that we have made we also will be publishing again and admitting it why the idea of messenger bot has been evolved into this state and the full functions of this bot will be explained by Mahne Nununai, the outreach manager of Mido. The message of Bogaro, Adikaro, the Achala Sisi, Wonedi, the Amai Atipinia, Bevo Drago. We came up with the messenger bot idea because as people in Nyema have been already familiar with the usage of messenger. The process of using it might be a lot easier than, say, a standalone application. Moreover, as there has been a lot of fake news and data that are not true these days, so we can't just deal with our Facebook page alone. We need interaction and awareness for what is really happening, and it needs to be voluntary. The boss function not only as a fact checking tool, there will be a function in which you can get quizzes relating the current information. There is also a function in which you can subscribe to access daily facts in which you might be interested. Reporter David Tanner reporting from Myanmar International Radio. And that's all the reports on Myanmar today. Now let's carry on with international news. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the co-founders of Google, have announced they are stepping down from running the online giant's parent company. The pair will leave their respective roles as Alphabet's CEO and president, but will remain on the company's board. A statement said Google's CEO Sundar Pichai will become Alphabet's CEO too. Alphabet was created in 2015 as part of a corporate restructuring of Google, which Mr. Page and Mr. Brin famously founded in a California garage in 1998. The parent company was intended to make the tech giant's activities cleaner and more accountable, as it expanded from internet search into other areas like self-driving cars. The pair moved from Google to Alphabet when it was formed, saying they were making the jump to focus on starting new initiatives. 
But in a blog post on Tuesday, the pair, both aged 46, announced their departure from Alphabet. Videos made by disabled users were deliberately prevented from going viral on TikTok by the firm's moderators, the app has acknowledged. The social network said the policy was introduced to reduce the amount of cyberbullying on its platform, but added that it now recognized the approach had been flawed. The measure was exposed by the German digital rights news site Netzpolitik. Disability rights campaigners said the strategy had been bizarre. A leaked extract from TikTok's rulebook gave examples of what its moderators were instructed to be on the lookout for. Such users were susceptible to bullying or harassment based on their physical or mental condition, the guidelines added. According to an unnamed TikTok source quoted by Netspolitik, the moderators were told to limit viewership of affected users' videos to the country where they were uploaded. Well, that's going to wrap it up on today's Myanmar Today. Thank you for joining me and you have a good day. I am Henry Zin. See you again.